guys, it's Mariska and today I'm going to give you my top tips for traveling to Havana, Cuba. Their official language is Spanish, however, there is a lot of Cubans that actually speak English. So if you speak Spanish or English, you should be okay. For most countries traveling to Cuba, you would require a visa. However, this can be easily obtained, although there's not that much information out there. If you travel from the US, you can get your Cuban visa at the check-in counter at the airport. We flew with JetBlue and it was really easy. They don't have tourism visas yet from the US but you can get it under one of these visas and you should be fine. There's a lot of airlines that actually fly to Cuba and a lot of them also have the Cuban visa fees included in your ticket. So you can just check out. If you're still unsure about the visas, do contact the um, consulate or the embassy or contact your airline you're flying with as they would be able to advise you because these unfortunately do change often. There's quite a lot of ways to get to Cuba. The one that I actually took was with JetBlue on a plane from Fort Lauderdale, 45 minutes and it's Hello Havana! They've got a few options of accommodation. You can either stay in one of their fancy hotels and be like Beyonce and Jay-Z, or you can stay with some of the locals in their casas, which sounds quite fabulous. It gives you a little bit more of that local touch, local experience. The casas are labeled um, with these signs. You've got the red one and the blue one. So the red one's more for your backpacking, cheaper accommodation, and the blue ones is a bit more expensive, typically a private room or unit. So if you do not have accommodation, just look out for these signs. You can also book with Airbnb, which is the route we went, and it worked very well. If the guys do not respond very quickly, Please keep in mind, internet is a bit of an issue, but I'll get there. I would suggest staying as close to old Havana as possible, as the majority of the stuff is going on there and it's such a great area to be located in. Everything is almost walking distance from you or you can easily get some of the other transport, like these bicycle taxis which is all over the place. You can also use some of their new taxis, which I would highly recommend if you are doing longer distances, as they are a bit more comfortable. They've got horse carriages, they've got the Coco taxi, which is a lot more affordable than some of their other taxis, and also their vintage cars. You have to take a drive in one of these guys around the city. I would, however, not recommend going on a very long drive as they are uncomfortable, they smelly, but some of them look spectacular and they make for really great photos. Or you can just walk your way around. That's what we did most of the time. Now about the money. Cuba is one of the countries that has two currencies. They've got their coup and they've got their coup. And it is a closed currency, so you would not be able to get these anywhere outside Cuba. They only accept six currencies which they exchange in the country, so it is much better to actually bring one of these. They do have ATMs, however, a lot of the times your card will not work in Cuba. So I would suggest to have a plan B and to bring some money that you can exchange. There is, however, a massive queue as you go outside of the airport with everyone waiting to get their money exchange. There is an ATM inside the terminal to the other exchange, 
which you can use, but again, if your car does not work, you are kind of stranded. The internet. There is internet cafes, however, the queues are quite long. Or you can actually buy one of these cards, which you just scratch out the password, you add in the login details, and you can actually use your own device. But you can only use this in some of the hotels. So usually you would see when you go to the hotels, their lobbies are packed with people sitting on their laptops, sitting on their um, phones, just checking emails. So that is how you would easily be able to get to the internet. But remember, it is slow. Some days there are no cards available. So if you want to get your hands on internet, rather get a card as soon as you can and just keep it with you. It is valid for 30 days and the cards are either for one hour or 30 minutes and you can just use it for your duration of the trip. I would recommend also before traveling to download an offline map. This will help you to get around, especially if you're not familiar with every place you're going. Also download Google Translate as this will make it so easy to translate menus, signs or just text as well. And please remember to pack a guidebook. This is key as you really don't realize how much you rely on Google until you're in the middle of Havana and you don't have access to internet. For the restaurants, there's two types of restaurants. You get a government-owned restaurant, which is a bit cheaper, and you get your paladas, which is private restaurants. It's a bit more expensive, but some of their food is amazing. One of the dishes that you will most probably see with every single meal is their rice with black beans, which I absolutely love. They also have a very famous dish called ropa via, which is a Spanish meaning for old clothes and it's basically shredded beef, which was also delicious. Even though some of the restaurants have quite an in intensive menu, it might be that they do not have all of the dishes on the menu every single time as they do not have all of the ingredients every single day. In the mornings, you'll see everyone queuing for their fresh daily baked breads, which by the way is delicious. They're not big on breakfast, so I would recommend grab a bread in the morning while you're off walking. They've got so many great stuff. And another thing that I loved was their banana fries. You can also enjoy some of their local beers, which is called Cerveza. And boy, do they love cocktails with rum. This is one of the places where I've seen people going to the bar and asking for a bit more vitamin R. It was really, really interesting. Also, your cocktails and your mocktails will be the same price. Even if it doesn't have alcohol, same price. On the street, they've also got some great seasonal fruit that you can try. And do not skip their ice cream. It's delicious. There's so many soft serve places, you have to try it out. Regarding the shopping, I would recommend take along what you need. Do not expect to find every single thing in Cuba. My top things to do in Havana. Number one is FAC. This place is phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. it when you walk in, there's, so, there's like a bar where you can order drinks. There's some place like stalls that looks like street food where you can order a meal and you can watch a film. Also, they've got really great art, very quirky art, some of them as well, but I absolutely loved it. And every single piece was just so unique and it was just 
amazing. I really loved the map of Cuba, which was made from small keys. They also had some interactive art and people standing in very interesting outfits. They had some videos. It was really as if you were at an art exhibition and it was just phenomenal. And they do change, however, regularly as well. So you can go to Cuba every few months and it will be different. It's really, really nice. This would be very high on my list. Go and explore it. You can easily stay there the whole night. Do remember they are not open every single night. So just check out their website. When in Cuba, you have to smoke a Cuban cigar. You can either smoke it on the street, you can purchase it at so many different places, and you can even visit one of their tobacco farms where you can see how the farmer actually rolls the leaf into these beautiful fat Cuban cigars. Watch the sunset over the Malcon. It is such a great experience. One of the spots that I found had the best view of the Malacan was at the Hotel Nacional de Cuba. If you sit outside, you just have a view of the ocean, which was phenomenal. So you can have a cocktail, listen to their music. It's great. Treat your taste buds and do not be afraid to pop into the small restaurants and bars as some of them are just great. The ones that I would like to highlight is El Chanchulero. Oh my word, I just hammered that. Sorry. It is such a nice and quirky place and they serve tapas upstairs along with drinks and the rest of the levels they do serve really awesome food. So definitely it's worth a visit but go early because you will stand in the queue. It is very popular. The other place is 304 on O'Reilly, which is also quite a popular spot. Their food was great. They really had some amazing food. The service was excellent. Manami is such a small restaurant and when you, you could easily walk past it, but they have honestly the best pizza I've had. It is so crisp and it's just amazing. It's really, do not miss them. If you if you walk past and you think, oh, you know, this, this just looks like a small cafe, go in, have a meal, it's amazing. You can also try one of Havana's first micro breweries, Beer Towers which is quite a tall tower filled with beer. So if you're a few people, it's actually really cool. I'm not sure if I would recommend it to drink it on your own, but who knows? It is great. They do have pints as well. So have a blast. It's awesome. I would highly recommend to take some time and take a stroll through Old Town where you can easily spend hours just watching how people walk by, children playing in the street. It's really such a great experience where you can experience the city. There is a lot of street dogs though, so be careful where you step. You might step into something, but um, otherwise it's awesome. It's really great to see how these people live on a daily basis and they are so friendly. A lot of them will try and get you in their stores. Some of them do not speak English, but they do try to communicate, which I really appreciated and just loved as it was such a great experience. And also there are so many artists on the street as well. So try and support one of these local art artists by buying some of your souvenirs from them. There is so much to Cuba that I just cannot put all into this video. Final tips that I want to leave you with. There's so many like touristy trap type of things and Floridita was for me one of them. 
It was one of Hemingway's favorite pubs when he was living in Cuba. And it, it's really great. The place looks amazing, but it's such a struggle to get inside as there are so many people drinking these overpriced daiquiris. I would give it a sidestep if it was full. Always make sure to carry small coins and notes as when you are in most of these government restaurants you will have to pay to go to the bathroom and they will give you a small tissue sometimes they don't so bring your own tissues and wet wipes also for the entertainment at the hotel or restaurant they will come around afterwards with their basket and want some money so always carry the small notes or coins there's some of the buskers on the street which I just found amazing. They were really great. This guy was one of them. I honestly hope that you do find him when you go to Havana. It was just awesome to see him and his band doing their thing on the street, which was great. Well, that was the basics of Cuba. I hope that answered some of your questions. If you still have any questions, please do drop the comments below and I will try my best to answer them. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Have a great day, guys. Yeah, I'm not